and I'm a sixth grade math teacher at RISE. And technically, today is my first day of my 11th year teaching. And it's been a long road. Um, I, I really hope in 10, 20, 30 years that I'm still here doing the same exact thing. And if you're here too, we should definitely hang out because I would love that. Uh, I'll tell you from the outset, uh, my the biggest feedback my wife gave me last night was to stop cursing as much. So I am still going to curse, but I am trying. I'm going to curse less than I was planning on. I was going to start with this story about the past being prologue from Shakespeare's The Tempest, and I was going to talk about this guy. This was me, my first year teaching in 2007, and I was going to tell this story about how on the third day of school ever, I actually called out sick because I was really nervous and I was really scared, um, not of the kids, but of just the responsibility. And then I was going to talk about how I used to not run to school, and I used to dread waking up, and I was really scared. And now I run to school, and I, I thought that was perfect, but I actually had this experience at Whole Foods the other day that I want to talk about. Um, it might seem like, why is he talking about Whole Foods? But on Saturday morning, uh, we were having some meetings at Room 9, and we went to Whole Foods for lunch. And on the way out, there was this guy, and I remember vividly, he had this black backpack on, and he had a water bottle, and he had all these like pieces of paper that he was gonna hand out. And it seemed like he was thinking about, am I gonna go into the store or not into the store? And he was like debating, um, I think, like whether it was worth it or not. And, and it really made me realize in that moment that I can walk into any store I want and buy anything I want, anytime. And I just felt an extreme sense of like privilege and gratitude that like I get to work at this amazing school and this amazing network with amazing people. And, and if our roles were reversed, I'm not sure what my life would be like, but we have something awesome here at Kip, New Jersey. Like I spent forever in my life looking for this. And when I found it, I'm like, this is just amazing. And then being at Whole Foods really made me like appreciate that, the beauty of what we have here. So I am gonna talk, Woo! I am gonna talk about this sexy bastard. Um, <laughs> quick show of hands, how many of you watched Game of Thrones? All right, and another show of hands, how many of you watched last night? Yeah. Okay, all right. Well, so those who haven't watched last night was a prior episode. Um, no spoilers, no spoilers. Uh, but I am going to talk about Jon Snow and some other things too because I don't want to just do the Game of Thrones. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about though is actually going to be a, a 10 second clip from last episode um, when Jon Snow is fighting the Battle of the Bastards on the, the ground of Winterfell and he's about to fight Ramsay Bolton for like his ancestral homeland and I, and I want to see if, I'm going to have one of you raise your hand when you're done if you can see what he does because it's something so small, but I think it conveys like the essence of being a teacher. So. What he did there? He took like a pause and took a breath, like a breath. Okay. He pulled his sword out. Okay. It also looked like he had some money that he took off before he pulled something. Yeah, that's the key. He had he took everything that was with him. He took his belt. He took his knife. He took his scabbard, and he just threw it off. And to me, that that's a small thing, but it conveys like my central first idea is like, if you want kids to run to school, you have to be all fucking in. He doesn't care where that dagger is going to be later. He's not stressed about putting his sword back in its place. He doesn't care about the belt. These horses are crashing towards him, and all he's worried about is that moment. And I think like a lot of things I'm gonna to say today, the biggest one is be all in. There's this great article by Shay Serrano. He writes for The Ringer. He wrote this article called A Teacher's Reward last summer. I'm not gonna read the whole quote, but this part here is basically saying the same thing. And he says, it's all important. But you only ever have to be really good at one thing. 
making sure your students know that you absolutely, no question, no doubt, for sure, a hundred percent want to be in that particular classroom with those particular kids. If you do that, which is basically saying if you're all in, shit usually works out. There are a lot of ways to be all in. One way could just be like, it's lunchtime, I'm going to go play soccer with my kids. Or before school, I'm just going to go hang out on the steps and talk to them. There's innumerable things you can do to be all in and, make, and build relationships with them. One thing that I've tried to do this summer, and I, and I would encourage you to do this too, because you know this summer, is I try to text every parent of the kids I'm about to teach. Just to let them know, hey, here's who I am. I just want to say hello. I did this the other day. It took two hours. But over 50 parents texted me back, which means that's 50 parents' numbers that I have saved in my phone. But that's more than 50 parents who saw that text, maybe didn't get a chance to reply, and know that in a small way, I'm thinking about their kids over the summer. Something that, well, this is actually just hilarious. I, I gotta show you this. I've texted the wrong number. I'm gonna read this. Wrong number, Mr. Joseph. Sorry about that. This is the best. That's okay. Good luck with the students. I'm thinking about becoming a teacher as well. Peace. I have no, I have no idea who that person is. Right there, that house. I have no idea. And, uh, yeah, exactly. I think that's awesome. The good vibes we just throw. They were like, that was to me. And we talk about this. That was the universe kind of communicating, like, this is the right thing to do. A lot of people talk about calling your kids before school starts, but I'm actually of the opinion that I want to call every kid's parent before October 1st. So I have 115 kids, and that's my goal. And this is Shwave and Saka, and they both run cross country. And I want to be able to call Shwave's mom in a few weeks and say, you know what, I've been watching Shwave, and he's so polite, he works so hard. He's one of the leaders on the cross country team. He actually is fast, I mean, he runs a six minute mile. And, and I want to be able to ask her questions about Shwave, and like just convey to her in a small way that I'm all in about Shwave. Something that Stacy does, and she does an amazing job with this, is she actually does home visits for all 28 of her kids in the months of September and October. Now you might have 100 kids or 115 kids or 50 kids, and you might not be able to do a home visit for every kid, but even taking 10, 15 kids and doing a home visit for them would really convey that you're all about them. Asking their parents on their couch about their lives and how you can help them and how they can help you would be a truly amazing thing. So, key point number one, like Jon Snow, be 10,000% in. Don't even be 100% in. Be 10,000% in. Number two, this is David Branson. He's the principal rise. He actually just had his second son this morning, um, which is amazing. And David has this philosophy about this piggy bank idea. And you may have heard this idea. If this is how this idea goes. It says, you want to make relationship deposits with kids and be, you know, say nice things and write them cards, and you know, be generally nice to them, so that eventually, one day, when you have to make relationship deposits, when you have to correct them or give them feedback, they'll say, oh, I'm not gonna react negatively because you were nice to me. And I remember thinking this once too, like, oh, I took this kid out to dinner, so of course they're gonna be amazing in my class because I've already done something nice for you. There's, there's no, I'm not even worried about it now. I'm not worried about a rhetorical because I've done the nice thing. And I'm gonna be honest with you, that idea is fucking stupid. <laughs> Here's why it is. It took me a long time to realize it. You should care about kids because that's what people do who are great human beings. They don't care about kids because eventually one day the kid's going to misbehave and you need to be ready for that moment. What a horrible way to live life. Let's care about kids because we care about kids and they care about us. Not because one day in the future they might do something in our class. And this is a picture of Rashad. I'll be honest. Rashad had a tough year last year. Rashad struggled. And I would like to believe that like when Rashad and I went up to Topps Diner, it wasn't because I hoped that Rashad wasn't going to be a distraction in class, because he still was. I hope Rashad just knew when we went up to Topps Diner, or hung out in general, or went bowling, or went running. It was just because we care about each other. So point number two, like David, authentically care. Number three. This is a picture of all of Rise um, through Google Cloud, through Google Earth a few years ago. And this is a picture of my classroom a few weeks ago uh, during our summer program. And, and I think that this is very key, it's like philosophical. The title of this presentation is, Make Your Kids Run to School. It's not, Make Your Kids Run to Your Classroom. It is easier to get your kids to run to your classroom. 
it is way harder to get them to run to the entire school. But when they run to every classroom in the school, to every teacher's classroom in the school, to every school in our network, that's when we make true, huge impact in Newark and other places. If you've ever seen Henry V before, I don't know if anyone's ever read it or seen it, he gives that St. Christmas Day speech, we few, we happy few, we band of brothers, and he like totally motivi motivates the troops. This is like Diane Rabowski does now at Thrive. She is all about making Thrive better. She is a cheerleader for Thrive. I remember the team's piece a few years ago, she won the award deservedly, and all of Thrive stood up and did this insane like dance and chant, and I don't even know what it was, and I was pissed. <laughs> and I wasn't pissed because they did I was pissed I want to be part of that. Why did I get the memo about doing this dance and thrive? I wanted to be in thrive at that moment. And I love thrive. I was like, damn, Diane. Like, she, she's all about, they even, Brian even said it, like the birthday sashes and the, and the apple juice. Like, she's all about being a cheerleader for thrive. And I try to do this at Rise in a few different ways. Anytime someone gets, like, there's one of these data blabs which Sharper sends, and you should thank Sharper for sending them, because I know it takes her a long time. I try to take them and like forward them off to the team. Yo, great scores. Forward them off to the person. And actually say great job to the person in, in, in general too. I'm obsessed with sending this. I don't know if anybody does this, but when I realized that the unicorn emoji with the Lager's feature could be combined, and you don't have an iPhone, I really do apologize. You might want to change just for that. But like when I realized you could send that, like that was that was it for me. I feel like I've said that to people in this room 10, 20, 30 times. Because like, I just want them to know that I care. I also think being radically candorous is a way of being a cheerleader for your school. When you authentically care and challenge someone directly because you want to make them better to make our kids learn more and have better lives, like that is a great way to show that you're a cheerleader for them. So my key point number three is be a cheerleader for your school, not just for your particular classroom. And, and it's harder to do, but the impact is way greater. Number four, back to Jon Snow in the first year, still looking good, um, with ghosts. Really hope I see ghosts again. And I think the key thing about Jon Snow is he actually has noble blood. He, we all know this, and I'm not going to spoil it, but we know that Jon Snow is royalty. However, he becomes Lord Commander of Castle Black and the King of the North, not because of his blood, but because he earns the respect of the people in his life. That to earn kids' respect and adults' respect, you have to have conversations with them. I'm going to give you an example. That's the few of us the other day who we went bowling, and Tahir is right in front of me. Last year, Tahir was on the cross country team, and he didn't run an extra lap. And I was like, Tahir, you didn't run an extra lap. And he's like, Yeah, I did. And he didn't. And I was really <laughs> mad at him. And, and I was rude to him. And like, I could have talked to him, I should have talked to him. But I kind of like yelled at him and made him feel bad. And, and I've been thinking about that a lot because Tahir's actually going to be in my class this year. Like, if I want to have a relationship with Tahir, if I want to earn Tahir's respect, I can't come at it from a teacher to student. I have to come at it human to human. Mm -hmm. And the minute you get here, human to human with kids, it doesn't matter what consequence system you use. Whether you have silent lunch or colors or demerits or merits, None of that matters if you can level up as people. If you can do that and earn kids respect that way, you're going to have a great year. And it, it takes time. I've had to mess up these conversations for years to get good at this. But you have to have the conversation. And last year as grade level chair, some people would say to me, what do you think I should do here? And I would say to them, honestly, I was like, to me, it doesn't matter what you do. Because I trust you, but make sure, above all else, you have that conversation. Get it right with the kid, and you'll be good. So the fourth one, like Kevin, earn respect through genuine conversations. Number five, this is my ELA teacher from 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Her name is Gloria G. Maserati. And she was insane, and <laughs> she, she, she taught college classes too, but she also taught in my high school this one class. And this is a college student. Here's what, here's what this college student wrote about her said, would not take again, assigns basically one paper a week, if not more. Lectures are all over the place and not very clear. Rarely responds to emails and does not come to office hours. Very unorganized. Two I have expectations for an intro level class. This is a college student writing this. And I was in 10th grade. And I loved her class. I would, I would spend hours, even days on a paper, and I would turn it in. And a month or two later, because she was unorganized, she would, she would give me the paper back. And she's like, this is trash. <laughs> not bloody. 
I'm a, I feel like I'm a good writer. And I'm like, what? I spend my life on this. <laughs> like, I don't go out with my friends. I, I think it's kind of, I'm not that friendly in general, but I don't, I don't go out with my friends. I don't, have, I don't see people. I'm spending hours on this. And she's like, nope, do it again. And that's when I really fell in love with writing and I fell in love with literature. I wanted to impress her, I'll be honest, but I wanted to make connections that she hadn't seen before. I wanted to read books that she had read and talk about them with her. She loved her content so much, it was so good at her, that I couldn't help but love my content too. Or love the content too. Christine, who's here, does a great job of this. And she loves math so much. She is such a dork about math. And I mean, and I mean that in a good way. Like, she's obsessed with it. She tells the kids that. And like, if this is Chidem on the left, every day during lunch, Chidem and her would be doing math problems. Chidem actually scored the highest score in the park, 833, which is like insanely high. But like, it's not about like scoring high in the park. Like, Chidem has fallen in love with math because Christine loves math. And if you think about your best teacher or your favorite teacher, the one that made you love to read or love to draw or love to write, I guarantee it was because they loved their content. You walked in their class and all you wanted to do was talk about that content. And I'm sure you love them as people too, but for me with, with Matt and Gloria Gino Maserati, I bet it was just because like, their ideas and thoughts about the subject were that transformational that you could not help but be caught up in it. Number six, and I think this is probably tied for the most important one. Something that Shannon does amazingly at Rise. <laughs> Shannon is incredibly real with our kids. She will take any question they have. She will talk about any subject that they want to talk about. She is not afraid to tell them the truth. And so like my last big thing for like getting kids to run the school is you have to tell them the truth. You have to tell them the truth about where they came from. And if you know this song um, in the third verse, Nas when he's talking about like reading more and running more and changing the look, he talks about how our kids, their ancestors were kings and queens. You have to talk about that with them. You have to be honest about that with them. And be honest as well about the history of slavery in the United States. You have to be honest with them about where they're at currently because uh, to me, they know more about this than I do. Way more about it than I could ever know. And I, I looked this picture up. Her name is Aisha. This is down in Baton Rouge. And she said that she went to protest because she wanted her five-year-old son to know that she stood up for his rights. And not being afraid to have these conversations with kids, even if you yourself don't know all the answers, but acknowledging that they have something to say and something to ask, and not being afraid of it, and not shutting it down. Be honest with them about their future. I taught all of these kids in fifth grade when I first started, and now they're going to better colleges than I could have got into. And I couldn't even have got into those colleges when I was applying to school. Talk to them about college. Talk to them about how, how college is actually really expensive. Talk about student debt and about how you know you have to make the best move for you. And, and, and that can take a, a, be hard. And how it is hard to go to college. And it is a lot of work and it can be really lonely. Talk to them about the beauty of Newark. Jeff Duncan Andrade says this all the time, but he talks about that, that poem, the Tupac poem, the, the rose that grew from concrete. Well, so many people want to take that beautiful rose that grew from concrete and move it over to this garden that's no longer with the concrete, and now this rose is in Montclair, and this rose is in Maplewood. Well, we need all these roses here in Newark. We need all these roses making Newark even more beautiful than it already is. Tell them that. I tell kids all the time, go explore the world. Go to Paris. Go wherever you want. But come back. Come back and help us. And the fact that Ryan brought those kids up today on stage, that's when I got tears in my eyes. Because yeah. if there's one thing I fill out in every survey I ever get, and Tyler can tell you this, it's, how am I, what will make you feel more happy at your job? Hiring people that went to Rise. Make Rise full with the people that went here, that went there. I also think telling them the truth means being honest about the world now. And if you've ever seen Lion, it's a beautiful movie. It's really sad. And just talking about how like shrewd his mom, like she carries rocks for a living. And that that's not right. That we should not live in a world with this much wealth where people have to live and they have to carry rocks for their jobs. Talk to them about that. Tell them that that's unfair. Answer questions about why that is. But while you're also talking about some of like the, 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 the more negative things, I also think you should show them some of the more positive things. I don't know if anybody saw this video. That's the way, yeah. 
I love his first girl. <laughs> just, oh, just goes right in. And then all the kids do. I remember when I said this in KJ. Oh, KJ's even up there, so I'm not crying or anything. <laughs> she, she even has that up there. <laughs> show them the beauty and show them some of the struggle and, and talk about both and acknowledge both and don't be afraid of either one because they can attest to it as be better than we can or as well as we can. I'm not sure what happened here, but it's okay. So I'm going to go back to that, that scene. Yeah, let's see. That's all right. It's, it's going to be cool. Um, so back to that scene with, with Jon Snow when he throws down his belt and his, his scabbard and his dagger. Does anyone know what happened literally one second after that? Does anyone remember? Yeah? I think um, the rest of his army comes behind him. Yes, and, and that's what happens. When you run to school, other people are gonna run to school. Jon Snow's whole squad shows up to defend him because they trust him, they care in him. And I think it has like a reciprocal effect. Like the more you run to school, the more beautiful. Oh yeah, it's okay though, don't worry about it. It's just a few last slides. The more you run to school, the more your kids are gonna run to school. The more their families are gonna run to school. And then the more their families run to school, the more that you run to school. It kind of has a magnet, thank you. It has a magnifying effect. And I think one of the craziest things is, is that even when your class isn't like the most fun class, or even when you handle a conversation and it's not perfect, don't worry about that. Even when those things happen, even when you fuck it up, your kids are gonna still run to school. That's how trusting they are. That's how loving they are. That's how amazing and resilient they are. That even when we're not our best, they're still gonna be running there. And the, the biggest thing that I've learned along the years is that, and this is just like a personal thing, like kids are gonna run to school, but you're gonna run to them. And, and I know Ryan talked about this, like, it's not about saving any lives at all. In fact, there's this great um, title that I once read, I never read the book, but the title of it is, The Life You Save Might Be Your Own. And for me, it's, I am such a happy person because these kids and their families and, and my colleagues are in my life. And if anything, like, yeah, is this about running the school? Yeah, it definitely is. But like the impact they've had on me and like who I am is immeasurable. And when I started, I never thought that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna teach some kids in the Bronx, teach some kids in Newark. And now it's like, they're actually teaching me a whole lot. And I'm not even just saying that, I always just saying that, like they're teaching me a whole lot more. So that's it. I can take some questions or comments.